Hello and welcome everyone to the daily news analysis of 21st of September 2023. आज की जितने सारे important articles Hindu newspaper से हैं, पहले देख लेते हैं। पहला जो है लोकसभा पास है history comments reservation bill India issues a tit for tat travel advisory for Canada. What really happened in 1956 Madurai event involving Anna Anna Durai and Mathuram Lingam they were legislating changes taking a giant leap for a new ethics in our outer space then keep calm three of the abraham three years of the abraham accord then women share in assemblies less than 10% in 12 20 states what is the tussle between the central government and the delhi wakab board turkey raises concern over kashmir issue during the unga united nations general assembly delimitation debate gender versus regional caste identities constitution bench to examine validity of existing quota then strip russia of veto power zelensky says in united nations address adb lowers india's gdp india gdp growth rate growth outlook for this fiscal to 6.3 percent so pehla jo hamara article hai lok sabha passes lok sabha passes historic women's resolution bill opposition want wants bill to be delinked from delimitation and a quota within quota for obc home minister promises to rectify shortcomings 27 years after a women reservation bill was first introduced in parliament the lok sabha on wednesday passed such a bill with a with a near unanimity to amend the constitution and provide one third reservation to women in the lok sabha and the state assemblies the bill will now be taken up by the rajya sabha for passage in the remain, remaining two days of the special session of the parliament and might require approval from half of the states calling it historic legislation prime minister narendra modi thanked the members i thank i thank mps across parties in party line who voted in support of the bill will now be taken taken up by rajya sabha for passage in the remaining two days of the special session of parliament and might require approval from half of the states calling it historic legislation prime minister narendra modi thanked the members i thank mps across party lines who voted in support of this bill he said in a post on x only two only two names was with four, 454 member of the lok sabha supporting the constitution 120 28 bill 2023 the constitutional requirement of a two third majority of a, of, of the members present and voting was easily met only two members the all india majlis e ittehadul muslimin se asad asauddin oaisi and asauddin oaisi and said intija intiyaz they opposed the bill the eight hour debates of mps from the treasury and opposition benches led by the congress engaged in a battle over who over who should get credit for a landmark bill as well as over the contentious issue of a separate quota for two for women from other backward classes home minister amit shah assured the house that government should, government would rectify any shortcomings in future You, you support the bill and reservation will be guaranteed mr saha told opposition members the congress made a u turn from its own 2010 position with its leader sonia gandhi who was the first speaker in the debate leading the demand for a separate quota within quota for obc after a conducting after a conducting a caste census he said there was no need to delay implementation of the bill by linking it to a delimitation exercise that is frozen till 2026 it is the demand of the congress to implement the bill immediately but along with that a provision should be made for reservation of for sc st and obc women mr gandhi said strongly countering the demand for a separate quota for obc the home minister said the bjp not only had the highest number of obc lawmaker also 
across the political spectrum but also a prime minister from the same community referring to mr modi giving a detailed break up mr shah said that 85 bjp mps 29% of its total were obcs adding that as many as 29 ministers were also from backward communities the home minister also explained that the decision to implement reservation after delimitation is to ensure that a quasi judicial body like the delimitation commission can decide after public constitution consultation which seats to reserve so do we do it mr shah asked pointing out that if Congress leader Rahul Gandhi's Wayanad seat or AIMIM leader Mr. Oasis Hyderabad seat got reserved then the government would be charged within with making a political reservation long voting process long law minister Arjun Ram Meghwal claimed that it was against the provision of the constitution to provide reservation immediately noting that so So, noting that someone may challenge it in a court of law we will not allow the bill to get stuck in the in some technicality he said as many as 60 members took part in the lok sabha debate that went on <coughs> that went on for nearly 8 hours 27 of them were women mps the voting process took nearly 2 hours as members voted manually using paper slips in electronic voting was not possible as some political parties have not yet informed the lok sabha secretariat about the division number or the specific seats that they will be allotting to individual members india issues a tit for tat travel to advisory for canada citing political condoned condone and condoned violence in india on thursday issued a travel advisory for all india nationalist nationals in canada including students urging them to register with the with indian missions the announcement from the ministry of external affairs came hours after media reports suggested that canada has issued a travel advisory especially for jammu and kashmir however the high commission of canada later clarified to the hindu that the advisory has been in place since the summer of 2021 in a view of a growing anti india activity and politically condoned hate crimes and criminal violence in canada all indian nationals there and those contemplating travel are urged to exercise utmost caution our high commission our high commission consulate general will continue to be in contact with the canadian authorities to ensure the safety and well-being of the indian community the mea advisory stated the ongoing indian canada spat begin began after canadian prime minister justin trudeau while speaking in the house of commons on monday blamed indian agents for the murder of khalistani separatist separatist leader hardeep singh nagar in british columbia in june the bilateral relations have also been affected by the ongoing online activities by six for justice leader gurpat gurpat wan singh pannu who has launched a launched a campaign saying hindu hindus leave canada hindu hindus leave canada without mentioning the campaign the mea advisory said recently threats have particularly targeted indian diplomats and sections of the indian community who oppose the anti india agenda indian indian nationals are therefore advised to avoid traveling to re, to regions and potential venues in canada that have seen such incidents the advisory said given the deteriorating security environment in canada indian students in particular are are advised to exercise extreme caution and remain vigilant Indian nationals and students from India and Canada must also register with the High Commission of India in Ottawa or Consulate General of India in Toronto and Vancouver through their respective websites or the madad portal madadgov.in said the advisory following Mr Trudeau's accusation on Monday Foreign Minister Melanie Dolly announced the explosion of pavan kumar rai a diplomat in the high commission of india in ottawa ottawa 
in an unconventional move she also announced that mr rai is the head of the station of research and analysis wing ro of india in response india expelled a senior canadian diplomat on tuesday letter mr trudeau reiterated that he is not trying to provoke india saying the government of india needs to take the take this matter nizar killing with utmost seriousness then it is what really happened in 1956 madurai event involving anna durai and mathura mathura malingam thevar bjp state president k anamalai recently claimed that dmk founder c n anna durai apologized apologized to forward block leader u mathuram lingam tevar and ran away from madurai after the letter was incensed over certain nationalist remarks made by him at an event in madurai in 1956 has led the led to the idmk declaring that the bjp is no longer its ally in tamil nadu mr annamalai later defended his claim saying the incident was reported by the hindu a persua perusal of report published by the hindu a perusal of report published by the hindu during may 31 to june 4 1956 reveals the reveals that on the fourth day june 2 of the golden jubilee celebration of the madurai tamil sangram sangam thevar took except, exception to anadurai speech but there was no reference in a report carried on june 4 1956 or subsequently to any statement or regret or apology made by the dmk founder strongly condemned the report in question stated that they were had con- condemned in strong terms in the orga- in strong terms the organizers of the global golden jubilee celebration of the madurai tamil sangram sangam for providing a platform to leaders of communal raja- uh, organization to give give vent to their feelings at the meetings held in the precincting of a temple pt raja ranjan one of the prominent leader of the justice party and a former chief minister april to august 1936 was the chairman of the celebration committee other speakers have referred to the artistic artistic statement made by anna durai on the third day june one of the celebration at the sri minakshi aman temple the report said without elaborating on the content of dmk leader's speech the previous day anna durai spoke on the theme of public speaking three were other speakers too and they included tamil scholar tamil scholars such as rp sethu pilai and bhai uh, durai swami who delivered their talks on tamil tamilian culture and region of uh, the ancient tamils the report also talked of uh, ever not being permitted to speak in his self when he got up and urged the organizers to allow him to address the audience first as his request was refused there was some confusion and a section of the audience become noisy the report said subsequently the organizer permitted him to speak then editorial ka portion jo hai legislative legislating changes legislating change the women's reservation bill must be implemented without it without delay the passage of the women's reservation bill in lok sabha almost 3 decade after it was first tabled in parliament is a welcome move that can finally shatter a political glass ceiling with women members of parliament comprising only about with women members of parliament comprising only about 15% of the strength of the lok sabha the gender inequality the in political representation in stark and dis- disturbing the 128th constitution amendment bill or the nari shakti bandhan abhiyan seeks to amend this by reserving a third of the seats in lok sabha and a legislative assembly for women it has a 15 year sunset clause for the quota that can be extended considering the fraud history of the struggle for women's reservation and uh, several false starts uh, despite the rajya sabha passing it in 2010 it is a uh, laudatory that the first bill to be introduced in the lok sabha in the new sansad bhavan has been passed in lok sabha but its implementation will be delayed as it has been tied to 
two factors delimitation and consensus and therein lies the rub it is unfortunate that implementation is being linked to delimitation for the principle of having the third of seats reserved for women has nothing to do with the territorial limits of a constitution constituencies of the number of assemblies or lok sabha constituency in each state women will thus not have access to 33% reservation in the 2024 general election the bill also mandates that as nearly as one third of the seats reserved in scheduled caste and scheduled tribes will be set aside for, for women the opposition is demanding a internal quota for women or for other backward classes but this should not be used as a ruse to delay implementation in the meantime proposal should be fine tuned uh, fine tuned to ensure that when it becomes an act it is not mere uh, mere tokenism tokenism for women women's political representation it is a fact that local bodies are better represented with the share of women in panchayat raj institutions well above 50% in the several states elections must be imbibed on how women at, at the grassroots level have broken all sort of barriers barriers from patriarchal mindset at the home to not being taken seriously in their official duties and made a difference as women struggle on so many other counts they have only been access to health nutrition and education there is a lack of safe places safe places women are also falling out of the workforce among the g20 countries india's female labor force participate participation is the lowest lowest at 24% india which gave women voting rights at the very outset should not falter when it comes to ensure ensuring better political representation for women for growth and instituting change in the key areas women need have their say taking a giant leap for a new ethics in our outer space the each to get their first and first is human being competitive is a part of the human survival instinct the urge to the urge to plant one's flag there before the other flag barrier does is human to it is a part of human's political instinct some 11 decades ago in 1910 and 12 both each and urge were quivering in the northern hemisphere robert scott a 43 year old british naval officer was preparing a de- a daring expect expedition to the south pole around the same time Nor- norwegian explorer ronald amundsen amundsen about 4 years younger was planning a bold ice drift to north pole on learning of dubious but loud claims by two americans frederick cook and robert perry amundsen lost interest in that destination it had been reached but the south for the south pole beckoned while the other while other had fringed that continent of ice no human foot had stood on the southernmost point of the earth setting foot on the south pole Scott and Amundsen knew of each other's target and goal, but observing due courses, all right, they raced to it. Scott and his men with dogs and horses, Amundsen with his dogs and sledges, Amundsen and his five companions with 16 surviving dogs got there on December 14, 1911, uh, 34 days before Scott and his team of five did. planting the norwegian flag there amundsen amundsen felt fulfilled as he should have he named their south camp their south pole camp polheim polheim meaning pole home in norsk and he remained and he renamed the arctic plateau as the king hakon b b double i plateau after his monarch scott and his team were to perish on the pole having been caught in the foul weather one explosion exploration success score, scroll amundsen is played on top in legend and uh, lore scott has for all time uh, out, outpaced his norwegian rival any race as its victorious victory some have iron iron is besides in 1939 norway 
laid claim to a vast area of Antarctica which it called Browning Modland or Queen Modland after its resigning queen, wife of King Hakon. This area covers about a sixth of the entire continent there, followed after another Norwegian claim to Peter Peter Island, Peter One Island, which, about, which is about 450 km of the western side of the Antarctica Plain. Peninsula. Britain had been outdone by Norway on the South Pole, but she was not going to be out of the race of her territorial claims over Antarctica nor others. And now, apart from Norway, the first South Pole uh, arrived and Clement, Britain the second South Pole arrived and Clement, there are five other who have sharply defined areas on Antarctica which, which they regard are theirs, Australia, Argentina, Chile, France, New, New Zealand. Uh, so, Antarctica has seven flags flying on their own Antarctica territories. How are these? Seven tracks and Antarctica, Antarctic ice, which over which flags of the different stripes fly, then different from colonies of imperial area. Area they are different. There are no subject people. There are people. There are no native resident who are being denied freedom. No resources are being drained out from the from there to the mother country but then why were the seven on the on that in, inhospitable continent at all regulation and antarctica's well-being with the international geophysical year IGY in 1958, seeing many players becoming active in Antarctica and fears of cold war rivalry taking on expected towns United States President Dwight D. Eisenhower convened in the 1959 an Antarctic conference of, of the 20, 12 countries active in the Antarctica during the IGY to negotiate a treaty when Argentina proposed that atomic explosion be banned in Tutu on Antarctica, the US objected, saying only those test, tests that were carried out without prior notice and consultation should be banned. The USSR and Chile supported the Argentina proposal, leading the US to agree and take the negotiation forward. In the present times, when satellites can pick up any activity that is suspicious, none of them can do anything questionable there. There will be found out, but even before the world developed in sky eyes, yeah, the, I, the early Antarctician had to share their space with other ships only to justice, only to justify their own Argentina, or Australia, Belgium, Chile, France, Japan, New Zealand, Norway, South Africa, and Soviet Union, the United Kingdom, and the United States, 12 countries had established over 55 Antarctic research stations for the IGY and they had to make the treaty record full acceptance to the two basics freedom of scientific research in Antarctic, Antarctica and the peaceful use of the continent and an indirect consensus emerged for demilitarization de as the treaty prohibited nuclear testing, military operations, economic exploration and further territorial claims in Antarctica. Today there are 54 parties to the treaty with 29 having consultative status. India with its own station on Queen Maud's land being one of the 29 one of those 29 that have demonstrated their interest in Antarctica by carrying out substantial Scientific activity there, close monitoring system are in position and position to regulate the activities of the countries with a presence of Antarctica in order to maintain its ecological integrity. But the fact that there, there are around 66 scientific stations in Antarctica, 30, 37 being occupied year round, the remainder closely closing down for winter and summer, and some 4,000 people through the summer months and uh, about 1,000 over winter each year living on it, in my opinion, compromises with its well-being is the work being done for humanity good from their sufficient ground for the present and future footprint of humanity on its climate. climatically challenged surface. But this article is not about the Earth's South Pole alone. The Earth's seas and ice are different from the sky and its spheres, but we know that there has been 
लॉन्ग एन लॉन्ग एन अंटार्टिक टाइप रेस इन आउटर स्पेस बिटवीन द पावर स्विच हैव प्रोटेक्ट प्रिफेक्टेड परफेक्टेड विद ग्रेट टॉयल एंड एट ग्रेट एक्सपेंस टू पेनिट्रेट इट एंड गो हायर एंड हायर फास्टर एंड फास्टर देन देयर several peers and the world has been all too aware of the need dire and pressing to event an arms race in outer space an agreement that is about to restant even as the earth south pole drew amundsen amundsen and scott to it the moon pulled the russia's luna 25 lander and india's chandrayaan 3 to it the indian vehicle reached its destination but russian was not so fortunate fortunate and just as the world's engagement with antarctica led to a treaty so does the moon agreement adopted by the general assembly in 1979 in resolution 34 by 68 elaborating on many of the provisions of the outer space treaty provide that space probing humanity humanity's dealing with the moon should be you do exclusively for peaceful purposes that its environment should not be disrupted that the united nations should be informed of the location and purpose of any station established on it the agreement states that the moon and its natural resources are the common heritage of mankind and that an international regime should be established to govern the exploration of such resources when such exploration is about to become feasible the moon agreement is far sighted something of the world's experience of antarctica and the working of antarctic treaty informs it the moon agreement is a self regulating covenant of restraint it anticipates human appetite is of for turf for control for the earth to get their first flag and all and dig in pride and acceleration so over the chandrayaan 3 achievement entirely natural and natural must now be followed by a manner mature policy on the future of india's earth born plants on the moon to put it differently as an earth pioneer on the moon india must by a precept and practice set the pace for earth's agenda on the moon and of the moon's future as a partner with this, with the earth as a partner not as property as a collaborator in science and not a colony in subjugation the moon agreement must be taken to its next logical stage prime minister narendra modi statement the success of chandrayaan 3 is not just india's wise and responsible responsible following up on that he can now do the world's space mission great service he can do some now and do so now by taking the initiative to craft a declaration of the fundamental rights of outer space and thereby inaugurate a new ethics for human activity in outer space including very pointedly pointedly the earth's responsibility towards outer space debris then this new ethic must be must make the non militarization of outer space a non negotiable covenant the outer space treaty and moon agreement now need aligning not just with the with at least advances in space mission but with a moral compass to the star india cannot afford to be among among those who may want to scramble temple for outer space hegemony is over what is not just the common heritage of human kind but that of a larger cosmos keep calm enormity of climate change is no excuse to resort to risky mitigation strategy enormity india had its rain was a dumbest august in a century this year while scientists are yet to link this anomaly with the chaotic effect of the climate change it underscores the constant th- constant threat of disrupted weather is the resulting consensus for economy and the importance of climate mitigation one of the more desperate and dangerous idea to have emerged from this impetus is solar radiation management to 
Block some of the incoming solar radiation to cool the Earth's surface. SRMC danger emerges from the fact that it interferes with natural mechanism with the unavoidable planet-wide effects. For example, if an SRM experiment by one country leads to more than over the Horn of Africa than expected, it could trigger a locust swarm that eventually destroys crops in Pakistan and India. There is currently no mechanism that holds a Geo engineering government accountable to the consequences beyond its border, nor, nor through which affected countries can ap appeal for restitution. There has been also the little research on under understanding how the world's myriad weather system affect the each other and their relative sensitivities to the intervention such as SRM. This is why the report of Climate so climate Overshoot Commission released last week calls for more research to close crucial scientific and governance gap before any deliberation on the implementation of SRM-like technology. The commission was constituted by geoengineering researchers to access ways to accelerate emissions cut. But while the report is careful to acknowledge that the scientific community's community does not understand SRM enough to attempt a deploy, deployment even in experimental fashion. It also argues for retaining SRM in metric in the matrix of potential climate mitigation solution. This is butterized by appeals to lack of time as the Earth's surface is poised to warm past, past the 1.5 degree centigrade threshold enshrined in the Paris Agreement in the next decade. This is a precarious suggestion because even less controversial but nonetheless problematic mitigation technology such as carbon capture take resources focus and political way political will away from the most effective strategy cutting emission and increase emissions lim emissions limit srm will only amplify this dilution the commission also else by claiming to act for the interest of developing countries at a time when the corporate and political actors have hijacked their room to develop to pursue economic growth at the expense of climatic justice there the enormity of climate change requires quick and decisive actions but when better solution have not been implemented as well as they can be and while there is still time to do so it is a disin disingenuous to contend that more high risk solutions should remain on table. Three years of Abraham Accord. Three years of Abraham Accords. This week marks an important milestone for West Asia and North Africa. Three years since the signing of the Abraham Accord between the Israel between Israel and the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain under the auspices of the US government three months later in December 2020, Morocco joined the process signing a normalization agreement with Israel. The catalyst that enabled these historic accords was the decision by the parties, of parties to promote stable future for a West Asia. The agreement has ushered in a new era of normalization and peace, peace that not only concept connect government but also brings people together despite differences in, the, in their language, religious, belief, culture and more, the Abraham Accord had also opened up existing opportunity for India and thriving business community which maintains a strong relation and active engagement with our nation. So far, the Abraham Accord have offered a mere glimpse into the full potential of regional cooperation even so the scope of the trade between Israel and other West Asian countries increased 74% between 2021 and 2022. Another example in to is tourism mostly non-excellent, not non-existent in the past which has skyrocketed in 2021 visited visits from Israel to the UAE increased by 172%. Meanwhile, the number of Israel flying to Bahrain since, since the establishment of direct flight has increased exponentially. Benefits for Indians the enhanced region. The enhanced regional connectivity has also brought 
significant benefit to the people of India. The vibrant India diaspora in Gulf now has the convenience of direct flight between the UAE and Israel as well as between Israel and Bahrain. India students are enjoying increased ease of travel, gaining improved access to our universities and community and opportunity to ex to explore international study programs the record have also had a significant influence on reinforcing israel's relation with neighboring countries for example the prosperity green blue agreement between israel uae and jordan de determined that a solar field to supply 600 megawatt of electricity to israel would be established in jordan while while in return the desalination plant in Israel would deliver 200 million cubic metric of water water to Jordan. Furthermore, the record have laid the foundation for expanded regional and multilateral multinational cooperation and this was, this has resulted in a flow of economic opportunity reaching India. Notably, we have witnessed substantial common substantial commercial collaboration between companies from UAE, Israel, Bahrain and the US partnering with the Indian private sector a concrete Illusion of this high-level economic cooperation between our government is the establishment of the I2U2 group formed by the Israel, India and UAE and the US, uh, the Abraham Accord made by I2U2 group possible and its primary focus will be on joint investment in critical areas such as water, energy, transportation, space, health and food security programs for youth. In a region where 65% of the population is under 30 years of age, providing this younger generation with opportunities is a key factor in preventing instability the, uh, to that end. Young youth, del youth delegations have been initiated encouraging bonds between tomorrow's leader dele delegations in which young influences experience each other's cultures and visit important religious historic sites while focusing on community building are effective tool for strengthening ties the abraham record encourages collaboration and education in the summer of 2022 ben Gurion University welcomed students from Morocco. Additionally, a number of Emirates Emirati students have enrolled in Israel University. Bahrain has also embraced the prospects for shared educational activities and signed a number of agreements with Israel to advance a student and a professor exchange embracing culture is in a notable Example of how these initiatives can foster mutual understanding after Emirati Foreign Minister Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan visited the Yad Yasen Holocaust Resemblance Center in Jerusalem. The UAE incorporated Holocaust education into its school curriculum as a mandatory subject. Attestation to the ability of Abraham Accord to foster coexistence of religious tolerance. The Abraham Accord have shown unity, unity's power to inspire. They offer, they offer a window to in, they offer a window into the potential future of the religion region and don't demonstrate that when both the leaders and ordinary citizens prioritize peace and cooperation, a far better future for West Asia is possible. Israel hopes that many more countries will, will join this endeavor, creating a brighter tomorrow for the sake of, of sake of all our children. India holds a significant position among our partners and the scope of our collaboration underscores our shared interest including campaigning a sustainable recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, expanding trade and addressing climate change and uh, countering threats to international security. Through the concerted efforts of our country's public and private sector, we are poised to deliver promising <coughs> outcomes for the entire world, our nation's share. <coughs> A special bond with the <coughs> with India and its people, and we remain committed to realizing the full potential of the accord as partners in peace and prosperity. <coughs> the next way women's share in assembly is less than ten percent in twenty states. The BJP government tabled the women's resolution bill as the first order of Business in the new Parliament House on Tuesday, Prime Minister Narendra Modi called the bill, in, bill a historic decision and said that he had been chosen by God for the noble 
task of giving rise to women on the ordinary day the bill was passed the lok sabha after a day of deliberations at first introduced in 1996 in the lok sabha by the hd devagoda led united front government the bill did not get the approval of the house it was reintroduced many times subsequently but for but failed to pass the muster and laughed with the dissolution of houses as per the 128th constitutional amendment bill 2023 or the nari shakti bandhan Abhiyan, a third of the seats in Lok Sabha and state assemblies is proposed to be reserved for women. However, the amendment to the constitution comes with a caveat that it can, can, it can be implemented only after a delimitation exercise scheduled to be held in 2026 has been complicated, completed using data from the latest census conducted after the passage of the bill. This effectively pushes the earliest year of implementation to the 2029 general election. After the after the implementation, there should be at least 181, approximately 33.3 percent of the seats women members in the lower house. At present, there are 82 women in the Lok Sabha, which amounts to 15 percent of the office members. That one, this year, women parliamentary parliamentarian. Has never exceeded the 15 percent marking mark in over 70 years of the India's electoral history. When considered as a share of the total candidates who participated in <coughs> the 2019 general election, their share is even lower at at 9 percent. The share of women candidates has never exceeded the 9 percent mark ever. Chart one shows the share of women members in the Lok Sabha over times. In the case of sitting state legislative assembly, the share of women MLAs is far lower, with just one state, Tripura, touching the 15 percent mark. Women women members formed the less formed less than 10 percent of the legislative assembly in 20 states and union territories. This includes states such as Gujarat, 88.2 percent, Maharashtra, 8.3 percent, and Andhra Pradesh. 8 percent, Kerala 7.9 percent, Tamil Nadu 5.1 percent, Telangana 5 percent, and Karnataka 4.5 percent. In the 2023 election, Nagaland got its first two women MLAs. Mizoram too had not had a woman MLA in the past seven assemblies. Chart two shows the share of women in legend, state legislative assembly over a period of time. When seen across party lines, women from the from just 13.5 percent of sitting members of the largest party in the lower house, the Bharatiya Janata Party, the highest share of women MPs in the Lok Sabha are from the Biju Janata Dal 41.7 percent, followed by the Trinamool Congress 40.9 percent. Similarly, a party-wise Analysis of the state legislative assemblies shows that the Trinamool Congress in West Bengal had the highest share of women MLAs, 15.3 percent, followed by the Congress in Chhattisgarh, 14.7 percent, the Congress in Karnataka, 3 percent, the Bharatiya Rashtra Bharat Rashtra Samiti in Telangana, 3.4 percent, and the Dravida Munnetra. Kaja Kaja Gam in Tamil Nadu, 4.5 percent, and had among the lowest share. Chart three shows the party-wide share of the women legislator. The share of women India's in India's parliament is also among the lower in the world when compared with BRICS nations, including the new members. India has the second lowest share, 15 percent, just above uh, Iran, 6 percent. Over times, so South Africa, Ethiopia had made giant strides in women representation in their national legislature. Chart four shows. The share of women in Parliament of BRICS and other countries. The next day, what is the tussle between the central government and the Delhi Wakaf Board? The Union Housing and Urban Affairs Ministry has taken over 123 properties belonging to the Delhi Wakaf Board. In it, it includes many historic mosques, medieval dargahs, and and cemeteries. Following a Delhi High Court order, a committee was formed by the government to study the status of these monuments to the two member 
कमिटी हेडेड बाय जस्टिस एस पी ग्राग समिटेड इन इट्स रिपोर्ट रिपोर्ट दैट नो रिप्रेजेंटेशन और ऑब्जेक्शन वाज रिसीव्ड बाय इट फ्रॉम द दिल्ली वर्कअप बोर्ड अकॉर्डिंग दिस अकॉर्डिंगली दिस प्रॉपर्टीज लाइव्ड इनटू द हैंड्स ऑफ द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट फाइज व्हाई हैज देन द दिल्ली वर्कअप बोर्ड गॉन टू कोर्ट द दिल्ली वर्कअप बोर्ड डिस्प्यूटेड द कमिटीज कंटेंशन आर्गुइंग दैट इट हैज रिजल्टेड इन वाइड स्प्रेड पैनिक फियर एंड रिजेंटमेंट Among the Muslim community, Baka Board Chairman um, Aman Tulla Khan, who is also an Aam Aadmi Party MLA, claimed the report had not been shared with the Baka Board, that and that are that there was no direction by the High Court to constitute a two-member committee in its order back in 2014. The Baka Board has approved in approved the, the Delhi High Court for redressal almost two weeks after the properties allegedly. Labbed into hands of the center, the Waka Board challenged, challenged the Union Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs letter, which absolves the board from matters pertaining to the said properties to the properties in High Court. The 123 properties belonging to the Delhi Waka Board, these mosques, dargahs, cemeteries, they are being taken care of by us. The, these properties are under our care and will remain so. The Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs Minister has written to the or saying we have no right to this property. We have challenged this letter, which is was sent to us on February 8th in the High Court. Mr. Khan told the media he also claimed that the board had gone had gone to High Court in January this year, challenging the formation of a two-member committee for these properties. Even as the petition was pending before the court, the two-member Committee's report came out. Are the properties in use? Most whispering whispers at the at the mosque and the dargahs were not aware of the change uh, change of ownership of the properties until the land and development officers under the Housing Ministry started past pasting notices. To the effect, outside these properties, on February 17 this year, the notices addressed the occupants of the said properties were for a survey of the place. Significantly, they did not mention the properties as mosque and or dargahs, etc. Nor did nor did the notices call the addresses as the owner of a prof or professor of the property. Things came and came out into public domain when the boundary wall boundary wall. Of the Babar Road Masjid Madrasa compound was with a century-old mosque and darga was claimed to be a railway property. What is the stand of the Waka Board? The Waka Board, which has gone to the court in February, the following. Um, Following the delisting of 123 properties and asked for a halt to the survey being conducted, filed a press application after the demolition of the boundary wall of the mosque, madrasa complex as at Babar Road, Delhi High Court. Uh, High Court, however, allowed the survey to continue. It did, it did direct the authorities to ensure minimal disruption in day-to-day. If I said the properties, including non-disturbed disturbances of prayer timings, the courts are oral observation about the non-disturbances of prayer timings came after the Waka Board alleged that despite the fact that the matter was a subject is the Delhi Development Authority (DDA) had <coughs> started sending its employees to visit the Waka properties along with the police who were affixing and distributing. The notices and letter at the properties, including mosque and during prayers. What is the housing ministry doing? Last month, a notice for a survey was pasted after outside New Delhi Jama Jama Masjid opposite Parliament opposite the Parliament House against the Waka Board's wishes. The survey was carried out at the mosque on August 21. A day earlier, a portion of the Mamu Bhanje Darga was demolished as it is allegedly infringed on the on a public road. The shrine caretaker, however, claimed the Darga is among the 123 deed notified properties where a court case is going on. A part of the shrine was demolished after a notice was sent on August 18. 
the authorities claimed this portion was built on enclosed land after Murmu, after Mamubhanje, Durga, the Pandara Road Mosque near Khan Market has been also surveyed. Also surveyed was the Sunheri Bhag, Bhag Masjid located barely 2 km from the Rashtrapati Bhavan. What has the center said the, in the court through its council? Com, the center opposed the Waka board, Waka plea against the inspection of this property of the properties under the under question and uh, claimed that the Delhi Waka board is not and cannot be owner of uh, any of the 123 properties and at best could only be a custodian that too only. If it is its workup property, merely because the certain properties were given on lease to various persons do not does not if so facto mean that the state properties are con converted into workup properties. The council reasoned in on in the high court the survey of the of some of the leading mosque and dargahs continues for now, though the graveyard has not been touched yet. Then next, the two articles are Turkey raises concern. Turkey raises concern over Kashmir issue during UNGA. Then, Constitution bench to examine validity of extend, extending quotas. Turkish President Recap Tayyip, Tayyip Erdogan raised the issue of Kashmir issue during his address to world leaders at the high level. 78th session of the UNGA United Nations General Assembly session here another development that will pave the way for regional peace, stability and prosperity in South Asia it will be the establishment of a justice lasting peace in Kashmir through dialogue and cooperation between India and Pakistan Mr. Erdogan said in his address to the general debate on Tuesday at as Turkey we will continue to support the steps to be taken in his in this in these directions his comment comes weeks after he met Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the sidelines of the G20 summit during the during which the leaders discussed the strengthening trade and trans trans and, and uh, infrastructure relations. The next article the constitution bench to examine validity of extending quota. The 104th institution amendment in 2019 has extended reservation of uh, seats for scheduled caste and scheduled tribe in Lok Sabha till 2030. A constitution bench headed by Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandrachud on Wednesday decided to examine if clock, uh, if clock work extension granted to reservation of uh, seats for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes in the Lok Sabha and the assemblies were constitutionally valid, originally the constituent assembly had meant reservation for the SCST only for a period of uh, 10 years from the commencement of the constitution in 1950s. However, Article 334 of the constitution which dealt with the time period to seize reserving seats for SCSTs and Anglo-Indians was amended multiple times over the decades. The deadline to stop the reservation was extended by 10 years or so, starting with the Constitution 8th Amendment Act in 1969 and all, all the way up to the Constitution 104th Amendment Act in 2019. The deadline was stretched over and over again. The 2019 Act of Act termination of termination the reservation for the Anglo Indian community and fixed 2030 as the deadline to end the reservation for CST in Lok Sabha and legislative assemblies by 2030. The CST communities would have enjoyed reservation for 80 years since the adoption of the constitution on Wednesday. The constitution bench decided to examine whether parliament can use its constituent power to repeatedly amend the article 334 merely in order to keep reservation of seats for the CST communities in the Lok Sabha. Lok Sabha and legislative assembly of the state as some state alive whether the exercise of the constitution power amended to extend the period prescribed for the expiration expiration of reservation under article 334 of the constitution of, uh, uh, of constitution is constitutionally valid the five judge bench framed the cardinal question the court clarified that it would be examining the validity of 104th constitutional amendment 
act of 2019 only the extent of its application to the scst communities and would not go into the termination of a quota for the anglo indian community after 70 years of enjoying the benefits senior advocate cs sundaram sundaram appearing for petitioner also kumar jain said the relentless and repeated extension of the resolution granted to certain communities had deprived the electorate of a, of a choice in content candidates and rendered them unable to even freely cast their votes the union of india represented by attorney general r venkata raman ramani and solicitor general tushar tushar mehta had contended that 104th constitutional amendment act was valid the bench including justice a s bopanna m m sundresh jb padiwala and Monoj Mishra fixed the date of hearing on June on November 21. The delimitation divides gender versus delimitation divides gender versus regional caste identities. An accelerating shift of political power from the southern states of the region above the Bindhyas was to be the, to be the central <coughs> debate around the delimitation of Lok Sabha constituency which is to follow the first census after 2026 but the proposed reservation of the one third of the seats in, a parliament, and in parliament and assemblies for women has added another power shift to mix. The next delimitation of the Lok Sabha constituency will hence involve two shifts from the southern to northern and eastern states and from men to women across the country. In the process, the serious concern regarding the <coughs> diminishing say of states that have stabilized their population in the, in the affairs of the union could possibly be overshadowed by the countrywide unanimity on women's empowerment. Population skew In Lok Sabha states where to be redistributed according to current distribution of the population, the northern states might have as, as many as 32 seats more, while the southern states might have up to 24 seats fewer. Kerala could, lo Kerala could lose 6 of its current Lok Sabha. Shares and Tamil Nadu 11 of its 39 according to some calculation delimitation of Lok Sabha constituency was kept on hold until 2026 through a constitutional amendment in 20, 2002 in the hope that population growth across the country will even then will be even by then northern, stream, northern states like Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar help <coughs> Decennial growth in growth rate of 12% to 15%, whereas in the southern states, the decennial growth rate ranged between 6% to 10% from 2011-2021. There was no leveling for more six election. Commissioner O.P. Rawat points out it also helps happens that population is growing faster in states that, that are of BJP strongholds. National parties such as the Congress, the BJP and the left parties are less adept at handling mobilization around caste religion and caste and regional identity identities which fuel regional parties they try to rely on pan india identities such as regional region class and gender in fact women's reservation is one one question that had the bjp congress and left on the same side of side for the past two decades or more obc politics driven parties in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar that sought caste quotas within the proposed quota for women considered the entire move as an upper caste upper class scheme to curtail their political power that line of resistance to women's resolution had limited logic considering the fact that OBC representation is not dependent on reserving the uh, reserving seat seats at all OBC politics the, through the Congress, though the Congress has now raised the demand it had rejected when it power no party appears serious about pressing a demand for OBC quota within the women's quota. So the proposed expansion of women 
women's representation in law making will, will weaken not only politics around regional identity but also autonomous OBC politics in the Hindi heartland. Yeah. Uh-huh. The BJP had already subsumed caste identities politics within the, its Hindu umbrella to a significant extent in the heartland by campaigning women's empowerment. It's, it is seeking further reinforcement of its social base, the pan-national category of gender complex, the dynamics of caste and regional identities politics. For the BJP, it is an additional layer to its politics of Hindu region, religious identity, which also cuts across regions, caste and even gender. Then Russia, steep Russia of veto power, Zelensky says in United Nations address. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky on Wednesday confronted Russia directly at the United Nations Security Council, denouncing the Kremlin's invasion of the of his country as a criminal and urging the United Nations to strip Moscow of its veto power clad in his trademark military critique. Mr. Zelensky, for the first time since the February 2022 in vision, sat in the same room as a Russian official who responded by scrolling through his smartphone with a look of conspicuous disinterest. Most of the women, most of the world recognizes us. The truth of this war, Mr. J- Mr. Zelensky said, it is a criminal and unprovoked aggression by Russia against our nation aimed at seizing Ukraine's territory and resources. He called the United Nations to vote to end Russia's veto power on the Security Council. He said the move could be among wide-ranging reforms at the sanctuary. Council that would include permanent representation for developing nations where support for Ukraine has been lukewarm. Veto power in the hands of the aggressor is what has pushed the United Nation in, nation into a deadlock. Mr. Zelensky said it is impossible to stop the war because all efforts are booted, vetoed by aggressor or those who condone the aggressor, he said. Russia's Foreign Ministry, Sergei Lavrov, defended his country's use of its veto power at the United Nations Security Council as a legitimate tool of international relations. Then, as the last, last article, ADB lowers India's GDP growth outlook for this fiscal to 6.3%. Asian lender cities weak uh, export. Iraqi rain as region sees increase in private investment, industrial output helping in lift growth to 6.7% next year. The Asian Development Bank ADB on Wednesday paired its forecast for India's economic growth in the current current fiscal year to 6.3% from 6.4% estimated earlier, citing the impact of declining exports and erratic rainfall patterns that could hit farm output. ADB's economists also raised their inflation forecast for the year to 5.5% from 5% estimated in April and retained their real real GDP growth projection for 2024-25 at 6.7% on expectation that private investment and industrial output would increase, noting that the economy displaced displayed a robust growth of 7.8% in the first quarter of this fiscal year. Despite global uncertainties, the bank said it expected growth to be propelled by the or by robust domestic consumption as consumer confidence improves and by investment including large increases in government capital expenditure through the rest of this fiscal and in the next year. However, as showing export could ferment Comment headwinds for the economy and erratic rainfall patterns are likely to undermine agricultural output. The growth forecast for this year is revised down marginally to 6.3%. The bank noted in its Asian Development Outlook update monsoon rainfall under the influence of a developing 
an alino has led to erratic weather patterns including flooding including flooding in certain regions and deficient rains particularly in august the erratic rainfall pattern has resulted in damage to rice crop in particular and lower showing the showing for pulses in the kharif seasons in multi the multilateral lender pointed out adding that it had slashes it had slashed its farm sector growth outlook for the year by almost 1% point the adp was upbeat on investment prospect in the economy despite a decline in the net foreign direct investment flows in the Last quarter to five billion dollar and from dollar from thirteen point four billion dollar last year. States spending more. Rana Hassan, the bank's regional economic advisor for the South for South Asia, said that investment were currently driven in a big way by the central government's capital expenditure push, but the latest quarter's number quarter's number. So the states had also ramped up investment by seventy eight percent. 78% moreover signs of a private cap capex can be gauged from the 19% growth in bank credit in the first quarter of with the with a decline in the bank's non performing loans and an uptick in capacity utilization rates in several industries with a better policy environment for manufacturing mr hasan observed so this is all for today friends and we will continue from tomorrow onwards with new new analysis from the hindu newspaper so thank you thanks a lot